is the um, January 13th, 2020 meeting of the Conway Select Board. We will be meeting um, at 6.30 and have a joint committee with the uh, joint meeting with the uh, Finance Committee uh, on the fiscal year to 2021 budget. We're being videotaped by FCAT for viewing by our residents and the public later on. Okay, first item on the agenda, we have the minutes for the December 23rd meeting. Does everybody have a copy of the minutes? Yeah. Has everyone reviewed the minutes? Yep, we good. Okay, any, um, any amendments or additions? Hearing none, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes for the December 23rd meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil, what do you got? Um, went to the Frontier School Committee meeting, the uh, uh, Frontier Capital Planning uh, Track engineering bid opening uh, meeting and uh, what else was there? I think that was it. Yeah, I joined Phil at the Frontier Track meeting looking at who to hire to design the new track. And it is unfortunate that most of us know so little about track technology and what to do and we're, you know, it is interesting reviewing all of the different plans uh, but mostly, who do we have experience with? You know, what, who's done tracks locally, and what do they? What's their experience? Yeah. So, so now nine nine bids, which was impressive, I thought. Yeah. That's great. And uh, on, nine bids. Yeah, most of them were Western Mass companies. A couple from Connecticut, a couple yeah. from out east, um, and uh, they all vary some because this is the engineering portion of it, mm -hmm. um, and some of them do everything in house. Mm -hmm. And some of them, you just get the engineering, and then they have other services they, they offer, or you can go with the FERCOG um, option as well. So there's still much to decide, but uh, not nine applications was a lot. That was a lot to sift through. That's great. So we narrowed it down to, I think, three. Uh, maybe it was four, but one of them, we, anyway, mainly three, and we're going to invite them in for interviews. So. That's great. The, and, and mostly to talk money, you know, the bids, the bids were ideas, not, you know, there was rough money, you know, a percent of right, right, that's project. what rather than specific, uh, rather than a specific number, they all bid on percent yeah. of the overall percent project. Of project, and so, uh, <coughs> and you had to sift through that because three percent from one maybe isn't as good as five percent from another, so it's mm -hmm. um, depending on exactly what they offer, so. Did they do a percentage with a minimum? Or just a straight percentage? percentage? Yeah, straight yeah. percentage. Okay. Yeah. But that's a good, that's a good. They did have a range too. Good. Some of them had a big range. I remember that. And we had a capital improvement uh, committee meeting this uh, last week. Uh, we're we're you know, going through all the numbers, but Tricia is, you know, she, she has a very <laughs> fresh perspective on how she has done capital budgets in the past sure yeah. and uh, and has a lot of good questions over over how to plan for all of the new roofs or you know the school parking lot or you, you know just you know yeah. there's all kinds of expenditures that we mostly ignore and well, and then we face them when we when we have them but instead of re reserve for replacements yeah. yes yeah yeah. We hadn't ignored them, we just hadn't had the plan for them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Same idea. Tom, there's a spreadsheet. <laughs> yes, yes, and she's made it much bigger. Yes, so, yes. So it's great. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, we had a site visit to the Roaring Brook Farm uh, uh, cannabis site and uh, with the planning board and the conservation commission. Okay. And we'll be talking about it tomorrow at the Conservation Commission meeting. Good. Okay. I had no meetings since our last 
It's been quiet. Slacking off, John. You're slacking off. <laughs> well, you know, I hear the new year is here, Phil, and I will be running, running, running very shortly. Okay, I don't see any public here, so there's no public comment. First item on the old business uh, agenda is um, town office closure policy discussion and vote. Thomas. Um, I came up with a couple of different options, which I sent out on Thursday. Um, they have a couple, they're, they're mostly Mostly different with the uh, with the pay um, goals are all the same, um, and uh, I uh, included the chair of the select board in determining the severity of the forecast, um, and uh, and a state defined regional emergency, because sometimes there are emergencies declared for certain counties. Uh, MENA yes. will do that. Yes. Yeah. So, it doesn't, so there, it, it doesn't make sense to do the state, because there could be some nor'easter that's pounding the, the cape that doesn't affect out here at all. Um, so there are just some more uh, parts of the puzzle. Um, they can be mixed and matched as the board wills. Mm -hmm. Bill, what do you what do you think? <clears throat> yeah, um, what happened to uh, the with the uh, the town solicitor's opinion? That was the homework for this sub this particular subject from last week. Yeah, I sent it to him. He hasn't replied yet. Um, I don't know that there. Are, what are you looking for for a legal question here? But well, whether we're required to close at any particular time or. I don't understand what the legal question is. Um, well, I, that uh, the the idea to refer to this to the uh, solicitor, I believe, was yours, John. So um, I don't know what the particular legal question is, but you wanted to run it by him and see what his opinion was. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, well, I haven't gotten one. My my hunch is that his opinion will be that it's a policy matter for the board. Okay. You want to give him another week? Yeah. Okay. We'll table until next week. My next item is um, Point the Town Hall and Office Renovation Committee. Okay. Um, we outlined this last week. Um, any suggestions on any other members for this committee? Aside from those that are listed? Well, last week we talked about having someone from the public, or, you know, maybe the council of the elderly. Or... Especially in light of the written, I'm not going to characterize it as a complaint, but written uh, correspondence from that, th those individuals <coughs> and expressed an interest in the meeting area and um, doesn't even necessarily have to be one of them, but just, it can, I, I, just a member of the public <coughs> is... Uh, uh, my intent on having a staff member from the town hall was to have Somebody, some person from each building that would be responsible for um, gathering the input from everybody who used that building. So that, that's just why it's set up the way it is now. But that's not everybody. That's my whole point. That's not everybody that uses the building. Well, no, and that would be a how many large me member committee? Uh, lots of people use this building. So. Anyway, and that, I mean, that, 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 that was my intent in putting it on here, was to get somebody who would ask people who use the building and bring that information back to the committee or say, the whole committee needs to hear this. So that, that, that's why I had it set up with five. I, I think you're, you're, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. You're leaving yourself size. vulnerable to a challenge at town meeting about whatever the committee comes up with without a member of the public in there. Well, it depends on how good a job they do, doesn't it? But I mean, you, you know that there's people that, that have a specific interest in preserving the kitchen facilities and preserving a, an area for the senior lunch, whatever. It just, w mm -hmm. if, if, if any one of those, if the final product does not contain things that you know in advance members of the public are asking for, then, um, you know, you'll, you'll, 
Um, well, I, I, can, I, can only lead, I can only lead a horse to water. Uh, you know, I, I think having there, they're a group that really cares. I, I think it would. Which group would you? The, the seniors. Sure. Okay. Uh, you want to put a member of the COA on there? Yeah. Is that good? Yes, good. Okay, so we'll put a member of the um, uh, the Council on Aging. How's that? Good. Okay, so they they have a say. So that makes seven members. That's 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 fine. All right, six actually. I don't I don't count. Oh, you're not a voting member. Okay. Oh, so now we have an even number of people on the board. Yeah, well, I I hope that things well, don't come down to a, a yay or nay. Knock out yeah. the drag out. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. Okay, that's fine. Is that good with everybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would be happy to serve on that committee. Great. As the select board member. Okay. And this, and this is a this is a public committee. This is one that there would be public. You know, public well, there's meetings. always public meetings. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a capital improvement person. That could be me, or it could be Trish or Roy. At the moment. I I do I need to tell you right now? I yeah. I doubt Roy can, uh, can yeah. do it. I'll say that right off the bat. So I'm happy to do it, and if Trish really would like to do it. Uh, that would be fine too. All right. So we'll vote on this composition of the committee. Is everybody happy with that? Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion that this be the uh, composition of the town hall and office renovation committee. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we'll have specific members when they uh, right. when they're named. And you would, and the final report will include price information and. You know, actual numbers behind your proposal. One step at a time. You go one step at a time. No, the final proposal will be to ask for money to get a cost proposal. Because we got to take this small, committee small steps, is not made up of designers and, and architects and engineers. Small steps, yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Tom, we have the uh, the town report select the resident for the memorial, uh, what was our suggestion? Uh, well, there was a question whether or not Peter Zale actually passed away in 20, in fiscal year 2019. We have found that he has, uh, that he did, and therefore he is eligible for the memorial. So, motion and for Peter Zale. I support that too. Okay. okay, he's a good guy. I liked him. All right, so we have a motion for Peter Zale to be uh, memorialized in our town report. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you made the motion. And we have a second. Second. All right, I'll call for a vote. Yeah. All right. Aye. All in favor? That's unanimous. Yeah. Okay. Next item, Council on Aging. Request to appoint Gail Connolly. Who's Gail Connolly? Oh, hi, Gail. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows Gail, right? No, but hi, Gail. Hi. How are you doing at Baker's? <laughs> All right, well, Gail, well Gail, Gail has worked with the fire department for a long time yep. and um, works with the Council on Aging. And she comes highly recommended by the Council on Aging, right? Okay. <laughs> Do you have any questions of Gail? Anyone? No, excellent recruit. Good job, Council on Aging. <laughs> Gail, I guess you're not going to be in the hot seat. Oh, okay. No big questions. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we... Uh, uh, appoint Gail Connolly to the uh, uh, Council on Aging for term ending in June of 13, 30th, 2022. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Thank you very much, Gail, Thank for you. coming Thank you. in and uh, volunteering for this. Yes. Okay. okay. So am I free to go? You are free you to are. go, or you could stay and watch this very exciting meeting for the rest of the night. <laughs> well, I was gone all day at my 99-year-old mother's house. So oh, oh, okay. So we'll, we'll send you a letter uh, <laughs> telling you about getting sworn in. And, okay. And yeah, the, I didn't know if you were going to swear expense. me tonight or what. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till you leave to do that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Jim. No problem. <laughs> Okay, we have next on the agenda the uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association 2020 Annual Meeting. Vote on Partnership and Transportation Resolutions uh, and Transportation Policy. Okay. 
Has everyone had a chance to look at these policies? The, the resolutions are similar to the resolutions they've had in the past. Uh, some tweaks were made um, over the course of the year. The policy is a new proposal, uh, and I've given you the, the uh, previous version and the proposed new version, uh, which takes the current uh, climate into account, so to speak. And just to let you guys know that, that Tom and I were the planning retreat that put these resolutions and uh, policies uh, up, up to uh, a vote and, uh, by the council, by the uh, association. So I would expect your support. <laughs> <laughs> How is this related to Governor Baker's TCI? Bill, these these are these are these are general resolutions on on transportation um, and, and uh, transportation policy, public transportation, and you know in, in all areas of the state. It, it, this doesn't bear on any particular proposal. This is a, a, a standing policy. This, these will become the standing policy of the Mass Municipal Association. They put they put these together every year for the uh, for the vote at the uh, the annual meeting. Okay. Great. The and they're all they're all work. they're all well thought out. Yeah. Would have liked to have seen in the area of school aid the, a call for a hundred percent reimbursement of regional regional transportation. We 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 ask for that every year. We do. In, in, in your resolution, it's not in the resolution. Well, we, we, we support bills that ask for that every year. And we lobby the legislature for that every year. So we're on top of that. Questions on the, uh, on the policies and the resolutions? Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, that we vote on the partnership and the transportation resolutions and the transportation policy. Uh, uh, how about a motion we vote in favor? Of <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well, of course. Well, of course. <laughs> we'll we'll push course. there, plug. Yeah, I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Positive Aye. vote. Thank you. And. You, I You're hoping for a vote at the MMA conference, oh, it, too. Yeah, so. it, it, so. yeah that, there'll be no problem with that. Okay. There'll be no problem with that. The uh, next item is direct local technical assistance prioritization. Okay, did everybody fill out their forms? <clears throat> yes. You did? Okay. No. Um, well, that's okay. We have another week. Okay, good. Um, well, we don't actually have another week. We have um, another week. I have to actually send them in uh, before the next meeting. But we have time for you to send in your priorities uh, before then. I have not gotten any from any of the other uh, committees that I sent it out to. Um, I tried to send it out to everybody who had at least one item on their list that could be you know, helpful. Um, okay. So I have not heard back from any other people, so it will be your priorities who, you know, unless I hear back late from somebody, it will be your priorities that, that go forward and I'll... Um, All right, let's say we get these into Tom by I close of business Thursday. Okay. All right, is that good? If I have any... Uh, close of business Thursday, we'll get them into Tom? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, next item is to um, sign the letter to the Department of Public Utilities regarding the aggregation proposal. I was right, this uh, is, requested to yeah, come this up is, with this. This is um, a letter asking them to move the process along because it's been, uh, been 11 months now. Okay. Um, Simple letter, just requesting that the chair look into uh, any delays that have gone on and to move the process forward. I'll make a motion. That we sign this letter. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 
Carol, you good? And I like we're sending it to Natalie and to yeah, Adam. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, it's not 6.30 yet, so I'm going to have the joint meeting. Um, so, Tom, do we have any items um, not anticipated? Uh, just a, a foreshadowing of, of something in the future. Um, someone sold their Chapter 61 land without going through the process they're required to, which has led to some difficulties. I'm conferring with town council, but I've proposed a process for going forward that says, let's do what we usually do and see if we can get a resolution as quickly as possible because both Lee and I believe that the parcel involved will not be of interest to any of the committees who are charged with reviewing uh, Chapter 61 sales um, in case the town would like to buy the land. Uh, so far we haven't bought any land that anyone who's selling Chapter land has uh, offered the town for as first refusal, which they're required to. So I think if we, if we uh, come to that conclusion and the select board takes a vote um, that that will be sufficient uh, for whatever legal process needs to go forward but I'm uh, checking with town council as I mentioned and uh, should be able to bring that forward to you next week that's just a heads up so so we don't make any kind of recording uh, in, in the registry of deeds yes I, I think it's it's um, a fault of the uh, of the real estate lawyers that they did not discover it before now. The title company yeah. didn't discover it? Um, I can't say exactly what happened, but apparently he has reached a purchase and, well, you know, you have to reach a purchase and sale agreement before you take it to the town. Mm -hmm. Then, um, and it, it may be an estate sale. Uh, I'm not clear on that either. Um, but um, something should be get triggered, though. You're it right. Should. We uh, should have been notified. I'm not sure why it happened. Yeah. Um, but we you need. Um, you ask town council to look into it. Oh, I have. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's uh, um, a mess up like that um, can be the the the, uh, the title insurance company is the one that signs in the bottom line. That's right. Yeah. How does that get discovered? Um, I am not sure. Lee got the earful and just told me there was a problem. And I yeah. said, maybe we, maybe this can fix it. Send it on to town council and say, what do you think? Mm -hmm. okay. Forward at least mm -hmm. note to him. So. Okay. Can we get your update, Tom? Uh, sure. Hey, what's happening? Thank you. I'm going to shoot myself. Well, maybe we can. I don't know. There's three. Good. That's good. Okay. Uh, in committee news, I've been working with the planning board to help ensure the best outcome from their deliberations regarding the special permit for Roaring Glen Farm. Their options are limited to ensuring that the town bylaw is enforced. Items such as floodlights may be controlled, but the planning board is not in a position to deny the special permit if the operator's plan complies with town and state law. It can only make conditions, and the nature of those are limited. I've been working with the Capital Improvements Planning Committee to produce a comprehensive list of items to consider, and Trisha and Casey met with the highway superintendent to see his trucks and equipment. I anticipate that the presentation of capital items at town meeting will be organized and informative. Although it will probably take well into FY 2021 to produce a comprehensive capital improvements plan. In departmental news, the town has received its first distribution of room rental taxes, $1,632.93 for the months of September, October, and November. If these three months are average, over 12 months, the town should receive about $6,532 each year from our room tax. Now, what, what's the percentage we're getting on that? I think it's 6%. 6%? That's exactly what we forecast. But I, re I remember looking at it and saying it's between 5 and 10% a year. And um, this, this was the Airbnb tax. We were the first, yeah. we were the first on it. And uh, that's, okay. that's a good thing, good. in my opinion. It's mostly, mostly if not entirely paid by out-of-towners. Right, right. Okay. 
Uh, I've been working with the highway superintendent and town council trying to find a workable approach to people plowing snow into the street. The trails of snow often turn into bars of ice. It has gotten much worse this year. It may be time to bring back the proposal to make it a town bylaw. There is a similar state law, but it covers it only covers state highways. Okay. Yeah, I, let's let's um, let's investigate that further. Uh, I've revised the draft invitation for bids for the town hall cupola and other repairs, the pillars and related work at the front door. Gotten comments from the FERCOG, and I'm continuing to work with Malcolm and the building maintenance manager on specifications. So it was the, with the plowing. In, in the past, the you know the road crew would just knock on your door and say, "Please don't do that." Is that not working anymore? Uh, and there's a lot of it happening. It's right. just it's just um, yeah. It, it, it shouldn't happen at all. I don't know how yeah, people know that. I mean, they don't yeah. think about it. I think a lot of it's happening. But I, I think yeah. a lot of it's happening from from contractors. Oh sure. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. oh uh -huh. yeah. Not from the homeowner himself. Oh no. From oh, the people yeah. that are doing the plowing in such a rush, they just whip out the street, pick up the truck, and blade, and take off. Yeah. yeah. Instead of cleaning up the mess before they leave. Yeah. Uh, I had a conversation with Carl Bryan of the Massachusetts Office on Disability regarding the unsuccessful grant proposal for the town hall lift who said that there was an unusual amount of competition this year and that Conway has already received two grants, one for planning and one for implementation, which was making the first floor town hall bathroom accessible. Also, competition for higher end projects is even more competitive. He encouraged the town to reapply and noted that the proposal was otherwise favorably reported. I regret to inform you that Philip Snow has resigned from his position as Assistant Emergency Management Director, citing his need to be fully available for Eagle Brook should any local disaster take place. Philip Snow, how did he got to know you? Didn't we just, yeah. Didn't Who we is just it? appoint him? Exactly. Who is he? <laughs> I should, I, didn't we just appoint him like two he months ago? Assistant yeah, man yeah, Emergency yeah. Managing Director. Was was I know, was. Yeah, was, was. I know he lives right, right here. Yeah, yeah. Was he the recycling contract is being discussed by DEP and the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, who is asking for a one-month extension to solve some apparent non-compliances with state and municipal law. Town Council agrees with the points made by the district's council. The district advises towns to sign the contract and turn them in to the district. They're working on getting DEP to issue an addendum for signing later. Also, the MRF Advisory Board has voted to request that DEP send all towns an official amendment to attach so everyone has the same language. The district is asking the Department of Revenue's Division of Local Services to review the language as well. There is a state contract between the state and the hauler, and that contains much of the missing information from the contract between the hauler and the town. So it's unclear. Um, there are other issues that are unclear that are still being considered. So that's where that is. And that's my report. Okay. That last paragraph was an acronym soup, an impressive yeah, acronym yeah. soup. Um, I, Tom, that, that very first sentence in your report, that I've been working with the planning board to help ensure the best outcome from their deliberations. Um, in a controversial thing like this where litigation is possible no matter how the board decides, a sentence like that, if I'm the, the losing side of that planning board thing, I'm not liking that sentence at all. Um, so I, I just think that was kind of unnecessary. Risky, risky, unnecessary. Somebody's going to be the losing side. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Okay, so... Okay, where's our finding enemy? <laughs> She's right there. Oh, maybe they're out in the hall. I hear voices. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, that's Alan. Alan! <laughs> well, welcome to the yep, 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 yep. We're allowed to come in? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right on time, actually. You're always allowed to come in. Okay. 
I think Roy's looking for a parking spot. People are volunteering out there. Committees are running out of parking right now. Right. Never committed. Hmm? Okay. Well, thank you for being here. We're, we're meeting jointly with the Finance Committee to go over the Police, Fire, and Ambulance Department request for fiscal 2021 budgets. Okay, who wants to go first? Chief? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, under the police budget, uh, you'll see that all but one item is level funded. The increases under the training area by $900. That's due to required mandatory by the state for additional training. I had to go do it this year. And I'll be doing the same thing again next year. Um, so that's the only... What, what, what kind of training? Mandatory chief's training. Okay. Okay. Held in Norwood, Mass. Norwood. <laughs> yeah, convenient. nice ride. Very convenient for us. <laughs> they, they have a very nice, uh, very nice conference room in, in Norwood. The police department. You know it? No, it's not at the police department. Oh, it's not. No. <laughs> oh, do you give that training? Huh? Do you give that training? No. No. We receive it. Yeah. Three hundred fifty-one cities and towns that have to go to one place. Right? Wow. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's it's level <clears throat> funded. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. So your overall budget increase is 0 0.05, which is just a beautiful thing. So <laughs> thank you. You're amazing. Uh, so For many other reasons besides that, but that's... So, <coughs> so far this year's budget, we're at um, spent 47%. So we're pretty much right on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, gr that's great. Uh, questions from the finance? No. no questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Well, thank you, Chief. We'd like to see all the budgets come in this neatly and this uh, level one. I'm next. <laughs> okay, if, Fire, if, you're right. If there are no <laughs> questions, I am going to call it before you do the call it. Call it. Wait, wait. Call it. Well, before they come up with anything. <laughs> what do you have, Tom? Okay. Go ahead. Um, before we do the uh, the fire and ambulance, um, thank you, Ken. You're welcome. Thank you, Ken. Um, and I, I regret the, the finance committee doesn't have a copy of this. I, I can get you copies. Um, I, I'd like to express my appreciation for the work that the fire and ambulance departments do for Conway. Uh, they've been acting more or less as volunteers, doing it. Their, their compensation in the form of stipends uh, comes nowhere near the amount of actual department head work that they're doing. Um, and I have a, a, a statement that you have, uh, I think, in your packets over here um, that I'd just like to read. Although stipends have never been considered hourly wages, the current levels are not in line with the number of hours our fire chief and ambulance director work. Without suggesting changing the stipend basis of their compensation, I will note that the current system provides a very low consideration for the work provided. As part of the overall budget um, I will be presenting, I am mm -hmm. planning to ask that Conway's wage earning administrative assistants receive $20 per hour, two of them rising from above $18.50 per hour. Based on uh, the fire and ambulance departments tracking their hours, uh, those department heads currently work for much less than our administrative assistants currently receive, and I believe they should not be compensated less. Uh, please note that these raises uh, that I'm going to be proposing for these two departments are not included in the budgets those departments have submitted Neither the ambulance director nor the fire chief has requested a raise in pay. They are both working selflessly in the interests of the town. However, I also believe in both fair compensation and planning for the future when such generosity might not be present or even possible if someone wanted to perform the work but could not due to financial needs. The fire chief currently receives a stipend of $7,919 
at $20 an hour for the administrative work he does, uh, he would get $10,400 to run the department, a rise of $2,481. The ambulance director currently receives $6,741. At $20 an hour for her administrative work, she would get $12,000, a rise of $5,259. I urge the Select Board and Finance Committee to support this raise in pay for these two essential positions. Again, this was not a request by these individuals who I do not believe would ever propose their own raises. As their supervisor, though, I believe they deserve reasonable pay for their services in the amounts presented. Questions? Comments? You can't address historical. You can't extra, uh, address historical uh, deficiencies in one fell swoop. Can't do that. Okay. Comments from finance. Oh, so again, can we repeat the number that you're recommending for the fire chief? Yeah, let me uh, give you my yeah, copy. Thank you. Yeah, these are not in, in their numbers. Okay. Their numbers are, are, oh, are right. flat. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're already going to amend it. So you're proposing to amend the budget? Then? Well, I'm, 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 I'll, be, I'll be proposing it in the, in the budget. I do that. Unless, this is you know, everyone story. says, no, don't bother. Um, and, you know, we need... Uh, I think we do need to look at it in terms of the budget as a whole, okay. um, but uh, I wanted to bring it up and let people know what the uh, what I perceive of as a problem and its scope, its scale, and uh, what it would take to to change it. This is the, your proposal, as you wrote it, um, once again, it's like every week there's a new proposal from you that harms our town's negotiating positions with our teachers union. And this is a perfect example. When, if, you, if you want to make up a historical deficiency that has grown over the years, um, to do that and to effectively double someone's stipend, even though that person is like so deserving of it, um, it, it the, what is your argument when, you all, when all of your teachers and all of your TAs um, uh, ask for that same exact thing? You, you, that, those are budget-breaking requests. And you, um, if you want to address historical uh, deficiencies, I would ask that you do it over a period of years and not in one fell swoop, in which, which devastates our negotiating position once again, um, which you all don't seem to mind because it's just me in that room on behalf of the town. But, um, and I did do that with the uh, town clerk whose pay went up $7,000 a year for two years in order to get her to where the average town clerk in this um, in this region was um, a few years ago. And, and, that, and that exact policy was waved in my face in all of our faces repeatedly. Um. I heard on the HMP that the Deerfield Elementary School teachers don't like the two-tier pay. Mm -hmm. They want the same deal as the high school. <coughs> yes, it's I, heard, kind of it's I heard the same thing. It's, it, it addresses it, 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 differently, but it's the same thing. And the thing. cost, the cost to, do, to, to do that in one fell swoop is um, all four of our towns would have to do two and a half overrides from now until the end of time. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Oh, I'll, I'll note that the scale of my proposal is somewhat less than that. Right, at, right. But the, uh, the, the, the precedent of your proposal, the marker of that your pro proposal creates is a massive issue and but um, you're proposing a dollar fifty an hour raise for the administrative portion right is that mm -hmm. yeah that, that that that'll be separate that'll be next week yeah um, but but just to give you an idea of what they're of what they're getting and even going up to the current level would involve a substantial rise uh, again these are stipends they're not salaries um, but both of these uh, individuals are department heads uh, who do high-level administrative work. Uh, and that's um, 
a, a very different situation, uh, I think, from from any any of the other uh, town employees. Um, and the, I, I think these are these are two cases that are similar, but they're the only two cases that are like this mm -hmm. in the town. But the, I, I don't see them as comparable. The response to, uh, to that is that everybody that's position. asking for this, everybody that asks for something like this. Everybody's a good person. Everybody's a good employee. Everybody's deserving, and it's it, it can't be about the person because the person is awesome, and the person is deserving of so much more than this. It's about the policies that you have, the uniformity, the applicability of them to all of your different employees, and how this just sets up sets us up for huge outlays um, with with uh, 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 other entities that we have to negotiate with. Are you suggesting that we put town employees on the same basis as the school employees? No, I don't think that. <laughs> no, I'm, sugge I'm, I'm yeah. suggesting. They have to be a union. I'm suggesting yeah. that we. <laughs> right. then, that's the only way you get the doll. <laughs> you have the numbers. Anyway, yeah. um, that, that aside, that's a heads up. Okay. Um, yes. I think we should let them go ahead and, and yeah. present yeah. their yeah. budget. Well, I um, and, and maybe I'll, I'll amend my. My proposal. Go ahead, okay. Chief. Okay. The first line item that I'm asking for an increase in is the fire salary labor. That's the labor for the firefighters. Okay. Not me. Right. Okay. And that is an increase of $6,200 to offset the other half a year for paying for the firefighters' training costs. Mm -hmm. Remember last year I said we were going to step recommended they start with a half year and we next year mm -hmm. phase in the other half. So that other sixty two hundred dollars is for the other half. Okay. So they'll be getting they'll be getting their uh, all their <coughs> we'll be getting all their training paid for. How, how, how's it how was it how is it being paid for now? It wasn't this till this this fiscal year at all. If it wasn't then how would they get it? They weren't getting. They weren't getting it. They weren't getting paid. What they're doing this they year? They weren't getting paid. Yeah, right. They, they were getting the training. They were getting the training, but not the pay. And it was required training. Right. Yeah. Right. This year, yeah. right. they they train twice. A, when I renew my license from the state mandates it, I don't get paid for going to the continuing ed courses they require. <laughs> I don't. And they and they don't pay for them either. This year we we train twice a month. Two nights a month for, for uh, two hours each night, and I keep trying to make everybody sign in at the training on a pay training payroll record, and I, I have to go through at the end of the six month period because they only get paid once every six months. I have to go through and cipher every month to make sure they're they only one of those <coughs> pay periods that they're getting paid for because not everybody shows up every time, so if they don't show up, they don't get paid. So some, some show up both month, both Wednesday nights of the month, but they only get paid for one of them. So last year you talked about wondering how it would go and what would happen if people didn't show and mm -hmm. the fact that it was required. Right. So it, 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 it's, 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 do I think it's, I think it probably has increased them showing up a little bit. Uh-huh. It appears to me that there's more of a group there every, every training than there has been. Um, Good. And I think it's been reflective on response to fire calls too. I mean, we had a chimney fire last week, mm -hmm. a serious <coughs> chimney fire, and we had 18 firefighters show up, which is very good. Well, okay. Um, so, okay. That that increase. The uh, next one on the agenda is. Fire radio fees, and that is 241, which is an increase uh, fees up $1,500 for the installational cost of six new radios installed in vehicles. Mm -hmm. Right. The county is proposing going to the high band on radio communications equipment, right. yeah. going to the 800 from the 400 series to the 800 megahertz, and the county is uh, negotiating with the state of Massachusetts to get all the equipment purchased, but they're not negotiating for having the vehicle 
radios installed. And I got a quote from the radio company right here, uh, and it is fifteen hundred dollars more for the. <coughs> so the state is paying for the radios, but the, not the, the state's going to pay. Supposedly, supposed to be paying for the radios, the portable radios, and the pagers. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the the first the first grade of right. radios. Right. Right. The state is going to pay for those. And Do not, but no grade. installation of the equipment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, that that increases. The next one is fire department dues. It's, I'm asking for another three hundred fifty-five dollars in that account because we are now uh, operating under, or, or we have taken on this year, a uh, I am a, a, a new kind of a company. It's called I am Responding. <coughs> what they do is when they type out their report, say you call them for fire. And you're typing out your report. The, the, the dispatcher's typing out his report on his computer so he can alert the fire department of the call they have. There's the keys in this computer, then once they reach this certain key, it automatically sends out everybody's cell phone that's, that's signed up with their cell phones. Mm -hmm. It would come all over the cell phone almost a few seconds before the pager goes off. Even a couple of minutes in some but, aspects. So if you missed it with your pager, say your pager was dead or something, you get it over your cell phone. But more, more important than that is, is it gives us the tool now to look at back at our, 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 our I am responding report that comes out on our cell phone, and you push your button, and it tells you who's responding, because you sign in. When your cell phone goes off, if you're going to respond to the call, you have a choice of signing in, going to the station, or going to the scene. Mm -hmm. So when our guys jump in the fire truck, the first person jumps in the fire truck at the station, waiting for people to show up to ride with him. If he's signed up on that app, he can just quickly touch his phone and he can see who's coming to the station to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great thing. Yes, it is. Didn't they pass some rules? How many people have got to be there before the thing leaves? Well, there's no rules and regulations anywhere in the state of Massachusetts about that. That's hard to believe, but there's okay. Nothing. Because, because of your, most of your cities and towns in the Commonwealth, the majority of them are volunteer right. forces. And in the daytime, sometimes you only got one person to respond to a truck. But well, wasn't there something about having them three people or something? Well, that's the union. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, they per prefer three in each truck. Um, uh, some trucks only hold two people, depending because of the seating, but uh, um, you can't count your chickens when you're in a volunteer fire department. You yeah. don't know who's going to show up or not. So. So what that's not an issue here? It's not an issue here. We rarely, rarely ever, ever, maybe once, maybe twice a year, respond to a call only one person in the truck. Especially if it's a major fire, we always try to at least get three to four on the first truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that uh, they can attack the fire when we get there. Right. I mean, we had, we had a, less than a month ago, we had a, a woodshed fire that was blazing away, and it got the pickup truck parked on fire right next to it, and it was three feet from their garage. Mm -hmm. And it was raging when the neighbor spotted it. And uh, we were left with four people on the truck from the station. Those four people immediately got there, got the hoses out, and knocked the fire down while the other trucks were showing up. Mm -hmm. Our other trucks were showing up. So, it's a, it's a great thing to have a bigger than normal crew. You, you can't be guaranteed that. If we would have showed up at that fire with only one or two people, it would have took a lot longer than probably the garage would have got, the house would have got going, than the garage. Well, the people could have made it there. I mean, I like that. Well, some that people do make it. You're not sitting here waiting, right. Right. say, how, how much longer right. should we wait? Right. I know if I were sitting here and I'm the only driver and I say, oh, geez, there's five people going to the scene, I'm going to take off. I think right Why there, not? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Chief, how many radios do we have? As far as, uh, Truck radios or vehicle radios? There's six all together. Okay. There's and four trucks. And portables. There's four trucks. My cruiser is the fifth one, and the other one is in the fire station headquarters. And portables. And we have, um, I think eight. Okay. Eight. So we bought so last year. So eight. We so have five, one actually. Actually, we got a dozen. I think we do. Five plus eight, right? Yeah. Now the state is going to pay for those radios. Right. So we we got all those radios. 
for nothing. Yep. We had to put in a request as to what we wanted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So That's we're good. saving an awful lot of money on the radios. And, you know, the, the, uh, the installation of 1500 is nothing compared to what those radios are worth that we got sure, for nothing sure. from the yeah. state. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, port, the portables were going, what, three to four hundred dollars a piece? They were up. The new ones are going to be up like six or seven, I think. Okay, and then and then the ones in the truck, the truck were radios a were couple of thousand. They were a couple of thousand, yeah. All right, so you're talking about five, you're talking about ten plus uh, eight times, uh, say six forty-eight. You're, you're talking about a lot of money. Yeah. No. So we got we got all those from the That's state. That's why the state's paying for it. Yeah. yeah. Too many towns are going to tell them no. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that even that fifteen hundred dollars for installation, even though it sounds a lot, is is just you know for what we got uh, from the state, we're we're doing really well. So we have a total of 27 volunteers in our fire force. Right. Wow, that's amazing. No, it's wonderful. Yeah. 27, and we have four, uh, we got one kid just joined now, it'll be five juniors. But the most this kid gets signed up. Mm -hmm. Signed up. You know, and, and again, you know, one of the reasons why we have such a good fire department is because Bob has done such a great job with the training and bringing up the, the junior, uh, the junior fire fighters. Uh, you know, you look at some of our surrounding towns, like we're helping Asheville right now, because a lot of times when uh, when they have a call for a fire, they have two people responding, both of whom are close to 70, okay? So we're helping them out, because and, and we're able to do that because Bob's done such a good job um, in, in recruiting and, and retaining people for uh, our fire department. So this is just operating, and it's not, you don't have a capital budget on it. No, I, I'll talk to that in a few minutes. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah, this is strictly on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Questions? Well, the Christmas trees. I, I got one more, too. There's one more item there that's down in the, under the new fiscal year 15 SCBA maintenance <coughs> account. Right. Uh, I, we've been, that $1,000 figure hasn't been adequate enough. Uh, this past year we had, uh, the annual inspection just for the uh, compressor that fills our Scott bottles uh, is around $700 a year. And we had some maintenance issues because it's an older unit. Right. Uh, and it was another two, three thousand $3,000 more. So I had to scratch my, you know what, to get the money up for that, but we did. So I felt that we, to offset that, we should add another $1,000 to it to make it more realistic to what it actually is going to cost. Yeah, that, that's. Uh Keep those breathing apparatus. And up to, up let's to see stuff. what else we got here. Okay. And the other thing is, uh, so that brings it up around a little over nine thousand dollars a year more. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. also, I'm asking for in your capital projects request forms. I was asking for another forty-two thousand seven hundred dollars to finish off the replacement of the Scott packs and bottles, yeah. so we all had the new, up-to-date ones. Right. Last year we did half of them. Yeah. We're doing the other half this year. The Capital Improvements Planning Committee will bring um, their deliberations on those capital proposals mm -hmm. to the select board in a few weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is there a reason why there's no um, light item for the physical for the all the physicals that you're mandating that they do now? I have never funded them in my budget. <coughs> Select board's office, I always pay for them. Mm. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. Why is that? Because we fund pre employment physicals for all employees as of just before I came on board. I think I was the first person under the new policy. But you're but you're talking about mandating all existing firefighters take that physical as well, so that's... Uh, I'm certainly considering that. I think it would make sense. Um, that's, what the, that's, again, what the, that's, that's what the written thing was that you said we're doing. I don't know that we voted on right. it. If we did yeah, vote but, on right, it, I but it's, know. It's, it's not in this budget. Yeah. The law when it changed, the Department of Labor Standards changed their law this last year, that any new incoming firefighters had to have a physical. It also stated in the law that any existing firefighters were exempted from the physical. Not in our town, apparently. The, uh, with, with their, with the. I think if you're going to try to insist on the existing firemen mm -hmm. to go have mm -hmm. yearly physicals or something like that, 
I think you're going to see your force drop right in half. That was not okay. as it was. Certainly better than seeing them drop uh, at a fire. Right. But, uh, Any other questions for, for our chief? Oh, this budget. I just looked at the uh, year to date budget from Mike Cachell that we got today. And for you, Chief Baker, the uh, salaries and wages, you're about a little over halfway through. So, my question to you is the uh, labor line, third line down from your budget. Yep. Do you think that's adequate? I'm, I'm thinking that maybe you need to up, up a little bit. You're well, 14, we had a busy fall. Uh, it's. I left it the remaining because the the wages are up and down depending on the number of calls you have. Yeah. I mean, I have to look at it over an average of a, a, a long period of time, and I've always spoken to the board of selectmen. We always try to go over the five or seven year average, and if you have a busy busy year and it's up, they'll just have to. Go back to the camp, the finance committee to try to come up with a difference in funding. But um, the, the odd thing is, structure fires seem way up. That, they are way up. Yeah. They are. Yes, they are. And that's time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also would like to mention to you, finance committee members, that we had a lot of extra uh, maintenance on vehicles this past year. Right now, my maintenance account is. Five thousand eight hundred twelve dollars in a hole. Well, that's why general expenses are up then. We were like so all had that's a just in the vehicle maintenance, and I know that we're going to have more maintenance issues between now and July first. So I would be recommending that hear from you people as to when you want me to come back and meet with you to try to offset that deficit somehow. Well, I mean, looking for the fiscal year twenty one budget, I would suggest then that uh, maybe you want to revisit that number you have here budgeted. It's, it goes up and down like a yo-yo year to year to year, you know, I noticed. Was it your department that had the $10,000 cost to pass inspection <clears throat> on a vehicle or Yes. Something? That one truck was done. Mm -hmm. well, it was $11,000 on those two trucks. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, the suggestion to increase that line item sounds like a good one then, since you already... Well, you don't, I mean... I would hope this next year is not going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's sure. I'm going to talk my vehicle name. How do you, you know, you don't... Yeah. Well, do you have any kind of schedule for your trucks, what has to be maintained? Is there, is there any kind of... Uh, we have a... This is the first year that I've actually got a company coming in and doing the maintenance at the station. Mm -hmm. He just finished up the maintenance on the vehicles uh, in December. All right. And that's been taken out of that maintenance budget already. Yeah. Our bills have been, I think they're going out to be paid either last mm -hmm. week or this coming week. Uh, and he does a complete maintenance from the bumper to bumper and goes through all the trucks, all, all the engines, all the oil changes, all the replacing, the uh, greasing of the everything underneath there, uh, re oiling the pumps, this, uh, oiling some of the pumps and stuff like that. He does a complete maintenance. He checks the uh, air pressure of tires. He checks, readjusts the brakes. He does everything in one stop, which I think is a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. And now he has given me an annual report of every vehicle. And I'm going to start a file. I've got them on my desk. I just haven't started the file yet because I just got his bills in the mail right. and his reports. And that will be a yearly thing so we can track that. Okay. And if he sees something getting worn or something like that, he's yeah. going to comment on it. All right, that'll be good. So much for upcoming, upcoming maintenance, that'll be helpful. Right. Um, well, my thought is if you want to consider increasing it from over above what you propose, I mean, uh, defer to your direction, but it would appear that that might be a good idea. I don't know, you know, I don't. Seems like every few years there's a cycle you have to go through. To right, I mean, that. when something breaks, I mean, how do you, how do you anticipate when something breaks? I mean, yeah. The noise is getting louder. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's true too. But I mean, now that we've it got doesn't somebody, doesn't go when you turn the key on. Now that we've got somebody that's if you, if he's under the trucks in in the engine compartments, he spends half a day with each vehicle. Yeah, well, that's good. And uh, they have they have to be ready, right? And they have to be ready. And he's he's, he's a great guy. He does a wonderful job. It's hard to get him into town because he's got so many departments because he's such a good person. <laughs> but uh, he, he had made me promises. He made me promises in July that he would show up to do the maintenance. And he showed up in December. 
So that's how busy it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Any other questions for Bob? I think it's a couple of comments. Maybe I was considering asking you to revisit the, well, I was going to revisit the salary for the chief based on what uh, our town administrator has shared earlier. And also the labor for the firefighters, I would suggest. You know, it is what it is. If you have to raise it, raise it. I'd like, I'd like to revisit the maintenance too. Or I think maybe that's under, potentially under budgeted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, great. Thanks, Chief. Hi. Thank you. Okay, next. Gemma, you're up. <laughs> well, I I really did try to keep things as as low as I possibly could. Um, I did, in, as you guys can hopefully see, I increased the clerk's wages um, a little bit. We had dropped that um, the last couple of years just because I didn't we didn't have an actual clerk, um, and I mean. Tom and I are working now at coming up with an actual job description for the clerk. Um, and, you know, I have a person in mind that's been helping out um, free of charge out of her, the goodness of her heart. Um, and I want to make sure that, that, that she gets compensated in the future. Um, she's been doing a lot of the computer, the programming side of stuff that um, I personally don't know how to do and she does it with her regular job so it, it all works out really well so I have increased that a little bit just so that we've got a little cushion there um, as necessary um, I've also increased the hourly employee wages um, along the same lines as what Bob had done as far as paying for training um, in the past, we've always paid for the actual cost of the training itself, but we've never paid for the time that is put into it. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the handbook states that required trainings are, are to be compensated, so um, we're still ironing out how to go about paying it, whether it's going to be a lump sum or if the each EMT needs to keep track of you know, when they do trainings. Um, Basically, the way we do training is there's a set number of hours that we have to complete every two years. Um, so it, you can do everything in you know six months, or you can do it spread out over over the whole two years. There's no um, specific requirements for you know like with the fire department that you have to do two trainings every month or you know two hours or whatever. There's no. Um, it's just you have to have your 40 hours in two years and. So I've been trying to take that into consideration. Um, I've also I've padded that number slightly in hopes of us getting more EMTs at some point. How many EMTs are there right now? Currently, there's four. Wow. Um, so if anybody knows of anybody that wants to be an EMT, please have them contact me. What what do you, <laughs> what do you calculate as the ideal number for us EMTs? Ideally, I think if we could have six to ten would kind of spread it out enough over everybody that it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, it, it wasn't, yeah, exactly, um, wasn't quite so demanding on each individual person. Okay, so we, we need to double what we have, basically. Yeah, that'd be nice. Okay. Um, but we're getting there. I know I've had some some people interested, so I'm hoping in the next year or so we'll get some more. Okay. Um, Is that something the Citizens Academy recruits for at all? Tom? The Citizens Academy at all mention about need for EMTs and volunteer firefighters? Um, yeah, and we had yeah. one where, uh, where Gemma presented and, and did a great yeah. job trying to recruit. Um, yeah, we, we did regular recruitment of people at that. Uh, most, uh, we ended up with a fairly, uh, with a lot of the same people coming back each time. Um, so sometimes when there weren't new people, we didn't say it again, but we did uh, always let people know there were opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> Has the offer for paying for EMT training attracted anyone yet? I wouldn't say that specifically drawn people in it it's sweetened the pot a little bit and that being an option has definitely encouraged people and 
you know, there are, there are some people that have looked at it that it'd be better to, to do it on their own and if they pass and they get certified, then ask for the reimbursement. Um, just so then they don't have to worry about paying it back if they don't pass or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. But you know, having that cushion there of the the ability to say we will pay upfront, um, I think is definitely helped. Because four AD sounds more than last year. No, no. No. There's two that show up regularly. Uh huh. That may be what I'm thinking of. There's four on the roster. Uh huh. So, and I'm one of the two. <laughs> yeah. Notice the bags. Um, they've just taken a permanent residence. <coughs> they don't ever leave. But uh, the next thing um, is the radios. I I bumped that up a little bit. Um, I hadn't heard the numbers that Bob had as far as um, you know installation costs and everything. We only have one radio that would have to be installed. Um, I just I bumped it up because I had heard some rumors in the county that the radio costs were going to increase in the next few years. So I figured I would start preemptive striking basically and try to get a little bit more in there so that we have it when we need it. Um, I don't we haven't gotten the bills as far as what it's going to be this year for for the radio you know maintenance fees that we have to pay. Um, but Will the state be buying your new radio also? I believe so. Yes. I've, and, the, yes. you know, all our, our portable radios and everything, as far as I know, that I had to turn in the same paperwork that Bob did as, yes. as far as the, the requests. Great. Um, but we only have the one, the install radio would be the one in the ambulance itself, and that's only, um, you know, one radio. So right. um, time will tell, I guess. Um, I increased the postage slightly, um, mostly because it, it cost about $20 to send a certified first class receipt request, everything to make sure that applications get to Boston. Um, and at this point, it, it equals out to about one of those a year as far as applications for different licenses <coughs> and, and okay. certain things that I want to make sure don't get lost anywhere between here and there because okay. it just gives me gray hair that I don't need. Um, and I've increased the maintenance and repair line. Um, you know, our ambulance is getting older. It's still in good working order and everything, but things do come up. Um, we do have a fairly, a potentially fairly expensive repair coming up uh, to do with the air ride system. We're still waiting on the specifics from um, New England Fire down in Connecticut to actually figure out what the, there, there's two po options of what needs to be fixed and they haven't narrowed down which one yet. Mm -hmm. One is a couple of thousand dollars and one is a few hundred dollars. So um, okay. we're hoping for the few hundred dollar mm -hmm. one, but mm -hmm. we'll see. Okay. But uh, I think is that's all of Is that, is this, was it Aaron something other from Staines? Is he still buying ambulances for our local towns? Aaron Lewis. I Aaron know, Lewis. Yeah. He bought ambulances for a couple of our neighbors. I, 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 I know he put in a bunch of money towards Highland when the Point Social went in Highland. I know they, they cover seven towns or whatever. But. Okay, other questions for Jim? So the, the one thing that I noticed about your budget that's really is that if you look at the budget and the expended, the expended is nowhere, it, it never. In most of the years, it hasn't even come close to what was requested, which is just a reassuring thing, and it's unique amongst all of our bud department budgets, I think, and just how how much lower the actual spending spend was every year than what was requested. So, kind of somebody should remember that when it comes town to town meeting, if anybody raises a question about this department's budget, that it's in most cases it's realistic to compare the percentage increase in what's asked every year, year on year, but it's not so fair in her case, maybe. Okay, other questions? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, next item we have concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? Okay. 
Just the, the one thing that I asked about getting on the agenda a couple weeks ago, the, uh, the meeting with, that was requested on the floor of town meeting between the select board, the highway chief, and the neighbor to the new garage. Yeah, that's being, that's being handled at the department level right now. I don't think so. I think so. Tom, is that accurate? Yes, it is accurate. Yeah, it is accurate. Next item. Next meeting is two. Uh, next meeting is two. Uh, Dale. Did you want to sign? Lucy King. That's right. Yeah. Lucy King. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Sunderland's going to host the. Right, uh, right. So we said we were going to have a 4:30 meeting. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Okay. And so, uh, 4:30 meeting. All yeah. those affected have said that they can adjust their schedules accordingly. Great. Because I don't want to miss that. So. Okay. Okay, so next item on the agenda is uh, an executive session for reason two to conduct contract negotiation sessions with a non-union uh, employee who is the town administrator. Um, I will uh, ask for a roll call vote to go into uh, executive session and we will adjourn from executive session. Phil? Yes. Yes. Bob? And me? Yes.